Well, hi everyone, Sean Humphreys here. Welcome to the Take Charge of Change podcast. Well, over the last week, I came across an article in Entrepreneur Magazine, and the article was entitled, Seven Insanely Simple Hacks to Crush Your To-Do List. So I thought I'd quickly cover off these hacks in this edition of the podcast. You'll find the tips helpful. Well, seven insanely simple hacks to crush your to-do list. Great title. Um, Now, when I go through these hacks, um, I don't think there's anything here that is necessarily new for you, but I think it's, it's good to be reminded every once in a while on some of these productivity hacks to get through and plow through our, our many tasks through each day and, and through our week. So uh, let me talk about each of these in a little bit of uh, detail. And so the, um, uh, the first uh, hack or principle is to use the Pareto principle, you know, the 80-20 rule. You know, the rule that says, you know, 20% of your activities account for 80% of your results. And the Pareto principle is pervasive in almost every aspect of our life. And so, you know, it's one of those things where it's not about working harder, it's about working smarter. So, you know, part of that is just taking a bit of time before you charge into your day or charge into your week. give some thoughtful consideration as to what activities for this next week are going to drive most of your results. And so, yeah, you want to work hard, and typically those people that work hard are rewarded with uh, an inordinate amount of the results over time, Um, but you want to be smart. So that was the first principle, is uh, use the Pareto principle. Second principle is uh, sort your tasks with the Eisenhower decision matrix. Now, this decision matrix uh, when I read it, I'd heard it about it someplace else, and that was actually Stephen Covey in his Seven Habits of Highly Effective People talked about this matrix. Um, but I guess he stole the idea from, uh, from Eisenhower. And so Eisenhower divided um, you know, various tasks into uh, four key contra- uh, quadrants. So tasks that are important and urgent, which shall be done by you as soon as possible, that's one quadrant. Second quadrant, tasks that are important but not urgent, which shall be scheduled for a more appropriate time. And the next quadrant is tasks that are urgent but not important, which shall be delegated to somebody else. So the fine order delegation, which is an important productivity tool. And finally, tasks that are neither urgent nor important, which can safely be purged. Okay, so the most uh, productive people, uh, according to the Eisenhower method, focus on those first two quadrants. So important, urgent, important, non-urgent. The rest they try to keep clear of their schedules. Okay, so that's the second productivity tip. Um, The third tip is plan your day the night before. We've actually run, you know, several uh, videos and blog content on the, the importance of this. And from a psychological standpoint, it frees up our subconscious to work on the next day's tasks in our subconscious mind. And, you know, it, it, this strategy keeps popping up all over the place because it works. Uh, you'll just have a more peace of mind, more productivity. If you can hit the day running with a, a delineated list of important high productivity tasks, and if you do that the night before, allow your subconscious mind to work away at it, that's, that's a great discipline to integrate into your day. Uh, the next one is learn to say no. And learning to say no is a very difficult one, and sometimes this is sort of a, a personality-driven thing. You know, particularly some people are just inclined to want to just keep, you know, saying yes, and they get a almost a short-term adrenaline fix or rush or feel-good endorphins when they do that. But at the end of the day, what happens before saying no is to be really clear on what your objectives are. What are you trying to accomplish? What are your goals? What's your purpose, your vision, your mission? Because anything you say yes to should align with those important tasks. And if they don't line up, then you should say no. It doesn't mean that you leave somebody in the lurch. You work with them to see if there's other people you can delegate the task to. Is there somebody else that you know, has you know, a vision, mission, purpose that's aligned with what you're being asked to do? Um, so be very careful how you marshal your time and learn to say no. Uh, the next uh, productivity tool is work in sprints and exercise. And we've talked about this a lot in previous podcasts. So um, this idea you just sort of hit the ground running and just run all the way through the day 
is not a great productivity strategy. So everyone's different on this, but for most people, they can probably handle um, you know, continuous focus activity from anywhere from a half an hour to 45 minutes, and then you want to take a bit of a break, whether it's a walk or just disengagement for a bit of time. And oscillate between those half hour and 45 minute uh, work hard, relax rhythms, and you'll be far more productive. Um, the other issue is, you know, take a walk or even introduce a workout. Um, I know I find for my days, if I get a morning workout in, my morning is way more productive. And for those days that are longer, if I can fit in a swim or some kind of workout, it revolutionizes the productivity of the latter half of my day. And for those days when I start, you know, just not having energy, less focus, and it's a long day, if I don't get that workout in, you know, mid-afternoon, um, it makes the rest of the day really difficult. So work in sprints and exercise. The six principles, eat and train like a top athlete. Again, we talked about this strategy before. It's this corporate athlete idea. Um, you know, as professionals, we're paid good money to deliver results. And our clients expect us to be in the game and to be productive, hyper-focused, and, um, and use our talents and skills to help them. And so just like a professional sports team pays their athletes uh, top dollars, they do expect them to train and eat like an athlete. Um, so we need to engage in, in best practices around dietary practices, what kinds of diets uh, will give us the energy we need. Uh, we need to become a little bit um, you know, curious about that. We should not subscribe to the dogma about you know, dietary practices. And so I'm not gonna talk about it today in this um, uh, podcast, but you know, there's some, a lot of emerging work around diet, intermittent fasting, uh, the role of you know, carbohydrates, that so we should be you know, minimizing carbohydrate intake, particularly the sort of high you know, sugar, um, starchy foods that spike blood sugar and, and it takes away from our, our productivity as an example. Uh, number seven, defer, delete, and delegate tasks. Uh, this is an interesting one in that we, we need to have a bit of an ability to understand, you know, in the current moment, what, what's the most important thing that we need to be doing. Um, it's a bit of a chess game, right? You have this to-do list and, you know, hyperproductive people usually work in environments where the work is never done. You know, if you're the kind of personality where you start with your to-do list and you run through it and then everything's empty and it's done at the end of the day and end of the week. Uh, for many professionals, that's, that's not their world. And it's kind of a self-selection process. Typically, hyperproductive, very successful professionals tend to be able to work in environments that are ambiguous. There's always a lot of moving parts. The work is never finished. It's about deferring, delegating, and deleting tasks, and then taking on the ones that, that you need to be working on. Okay, so point number seven, defer, delete, and delegate. And there's a combination of uh, following uh, a few guidelines around your daily and weekly activity. So ultimately being productive in this um, article is a combination of the following, focusing on the right tasks, planning the tasks out carefully, and designing your life and environment in a way that allows you to tackle the tasks at your peak energy levels. And again, it gets back to some of you are morning people, some of you are night owls, and making sure that those really important tasks are lined up with when you're hyperproductive. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this edition of the podcast. Uh, if you lead people, if you have sales teams, senior executive teams, and you're intrigued about the idea of enhancing professional resiliency, productivity, health, then reach out to us. We'd love to start a conversation about how we can create some customized programs to help you achieve your professional and organizational goals. Be resilient.